Hello and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video. Forgive me lying down but uh, it was the easiest way to do this shot. Now I'm normally doing videos for you guys and your hobby of making bows and arrows. I usually try and help you out by making videos that uh, give you some instruction in some way and I hope you've been finding them useful. Today uh, I'm going to indulge myself and do a little video of my own hobby. Uh, if you hadn't guessed, my friend here I'm into Marvel stuff, so Captain America and Iron Man and Incredible Hulk and all the rest. Uh, I thought I'd give it a go at making my own suit of armour uh, based on the Iron Man character, mainly from the Iron Man films. So I had to make a arc reactor, which you can probably see there, and uh, all the other bits and pieces. Uh, I got most of my information for some fantastic people on YouTube. Um, uh, mainly ex-robots. Um, I'll put his details uh, in the description below. Have a look at his site, have a look at his YouTube videos, um, but I got information from all over the place. I didn't slavishly follow um, one method. Uh, I've sort of developed my own and found a few different bits and pieces. I'd never used um, a glue gun before. Uh, I'd never used a soldering iron before, uh, so it's all been a bit of an adventure. Uh, anyway, I took photos and some video uh, along, this, along the way of the various stages, so uh, yeah, hopefully this gives you some idea of uh, the adventure I had making my own Iron Man armour. Following the instructions on a fellow YouTuber's channel, uh, James Bruton from xrobots.co.uk, whose info, as I say, I'll put in the description below, um, I made the arc reactor uh, from various bits and pieces that are all available in your local pound shop, sink strainers, wire mesh, plastic pin holders, plastic cups, uh, LED torch, uh, plastic cover from a garden solar light, you name it. I gave it a go and uh, put all those bits and pieces together using glue gun and uh, the soldering iron which as I mentioned I'd never used before. Um, I think it came out okay, I'll uh, let you see that later on. The idea behind my creation varies slightly from other people on YouTube. Most of them are trying to make um, actual wearable suits of armour whereas I wanted to make something basically that would hang on the wall. So to get the main body structure I decided to use a shop dummy as you can see here. Uh, I've actually tested it out with the um, Ford red colour um, that I eventually used just to see what the colour would be like. I then started fitting on um, cut out and carved sections of 10mm foam. As you can see here I've got the first section of the uh, foam in place uh, and I then started um, cutting out more and more sections after that. Um, my reference was was basically uh, a book uh, about Iron Man which had the best large uh, torso pictures of his armour that I could find um, and I sort of made my own paper templates from that and, uh, and stuck them onto the foam, cut around the foam and, and glue gun those pieces onto the shop dummy torso. As you can see from these photos I've started doing the actual carving. Um, now I bought a, a Dremel tool for this um, and basically just did it by hand again marking onto the pieces of foam where the lines would go uh, where the sections of um, Iron Man's armor sort of meet each other and where they overlap and then just carved into them uh, with the with the Dremel tool uh, and in this picture here I've started to um, put on the sort of chest section that goes over the top of the shoulders uh, just getting the shaping right uh, and around where the arc reactor goes hence having to temporarily put the arc reactor in so I can get the whole shape where the, the reactor is actually going to fit into the chest area this quick video section shows the um, armour near completion. It's just missing the um, sort of shoulder uh, and tops of the arm sections. It shows some of the detailing here in the neck, again achieved with various different types of Dremel heads. Um, it was a bit of experimentation um, to, uh, to get it right, but it seems to be looking okay. 
This picture shows all the sections of foam that are going to be put onto the dummy. All that remains now is to do some of the carving, particularly around the waist section, to get some of that layering that you see in the armour in pictures of Iron Man. Here we can see I've completed all the carving and put on the first layer of PVA. Um, it's still quite wet in this photograph. Now, Before I put on the PVA I quickly held the dummy very briefly over um, a gas burner which actually helps seal the foam. Um, don't do this for too long if you're going to try it yourself. You may want to experiment with a spare piece of foam but it gives a nice sheen to the foam. It sort of closes off some of the, the top layer of the foam and makes it a bit more metal like. I did about six or seven coats of PVA and this is how the dummy looks after all that has dried. Okay it's time to put on the undercoat. Um, I used a plastic primer, a grey plastic primer uh, by High Coat and um, I just did one coat of this, uh, as you can see it goes on quite well um, before I got round to uh, putting on the first layer of paint. OK, this is how it looks after the undercoat has gone on. Uh, I realised at this point um, I was going to be putting on the red paint. I didn't want to damage um, around the hole that I'd made uh, with the arc reactor, so I decided to fit the arc reactor now and do all the wiring, but just leave it loose so that I could hold it out of the way whilst uh, doing the spraying of the, the red paint. Um, so this is how it looks with the uh, the arc reactor in now. This is how it looks after the first coat of paint, and as you can see, the uh, the arc reactor is supported from behind, so all the wiring's in, but it's not actually touching where the uh, the red paint is uh, is is around the hole that it's eventually going to sit in. All that paint is now dry. I've done three coats in the end. Um, so now I can fit the arc reactor into the hole. Um, it was a bit of a fiddle, um, but it fitted OK. Um, I needed to do some packing around the back and some more gluing with the glue gun uh, to get it to sit properly. Um, I'll show you that uh, a bit later on. I wanted to have some of the sound effects from the film so I found this Iron Man toy and uh, cut out a hole in the bottom so you could get to the button and just glued the module in. This also shows the, uh, the back end of the arc reactor after I just fitted it in in the uh, previous video there. I've yet to do the packing and you can also see where I put the batteries in etc. OK, I think it's time to show you the finished product. This is the completed suit. I fitted a light switch at the top which turns the arc reactor on and there's also a button at the bottom just underneath 
which, uh, if I can find it, makes the various sound effects. Uh, just locate it just at the, the bottom there. I'm quite pleased with how it's come out really. Um, there's a few runs of paint uh, <laughs> where I haven't quite got the spraying completely correct, but uh, other than that, it's not bad. Just show you the back of it. There you go, I can see the yeah, battery compartment and the back of the art reactor there, it's glued in. A bit more foam to block up any gaps. And the light, simple light switch at the top, and uh, the uh, sound module at the bottom there. It's just from a, a toy, Iron Man toy. There we go.